Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, going back and looking at the film, I thought our guys played really well. I thought we played really hard. Um, I thought we made some good strides in, in a number of areas. Um, still some things that, that we have to keep working on and keep improving. Uh, open week for us comes at a really good time. We had talked early in the season that we'd have four weeks of camp and then five weeks of games. Um, and then we'd get a break, and then we'd have four weeks of games. So this was uh, uh, this is a really good time. We've got a lot of guys uh, banged up and some older players that just kind of need a break. And then we need uh, we needed to develop some guys, and we need to continue to work on some some areas that um, we need to improve on. Coach, um, what what's this team need to do to be as effective on the road as it is at home? Um, Take our crowd. That'd be great. Um, no, I, part of it is just execution. That's the biggest thing I would say is is um, we didn't execute really well at BYU. We executed really well in the second half at Tulane, and that's why you you have a home schedule and an away schedule. Um, it's tough to win when you when you're on the road. So you have to make sure that uh, you don't make the critical errors. And when I say that, whether it's turnovers or uh, red zone efficiency, all the little things add up when you don't do those things well on the road. A week ago, you came in and said you were disappointed with the defense not holding them to the field goal. Almost an identical scenario. Yeah. Quick score, turnover, held them to a field goal this week. Is, is yeah, that, that was time? huge. Um, and and we obviously we emphasize it all the time, but we executed. And, and uh, credit to our guys, they didn't. I thought they went in. Off of the off the sideline with the right mindset of you know we've got to keep them out of the end zone and I think keeping them out of the end zone was really important obviously holding them to three and it's thirteen to seven but then for us to have the quick strikes right after that with uh, I think it was uh, maybe a long run or something with DJ and then we got the penalty I mean that to be able to score so quickly after the adversity we faced with the turnover um, I thought that was really important and for us to get that lead back. And Avery doesn't take turnovers into the next play. Mm -hmm. um, and, and he certainly didn't. But he then went on to play probably his most confident football of the season. Is that what you saw? Yeah, without a doubt. And um, I think we talked about it on, on uh, Saturday after the game. Coach Wells and I think went back and looked at it. He was like 39 of 40 or 39 of 42 on Thursday. Just threw the ball really well. And you could see that confidence in him. Uh, and th then he started to get into a rhythm. I thought uh, uh, I thought our old line really protected him well. And um, when plays did break down, um, we we saw what we know makes Avery so special. The one touchdown run that he had going towards Shamrock was a phenomenal uh, run. And then obviously the one on third down. And I thought that was a critical time as well because we drove the ball, we went for it twice on fourth down, we get a first down both times. All of a sudden, we're third and 10 or something from the 12. And I'm like, we're going to have another great drive and kick a field goal to start the game. And he makes a great play out of the pocket. Um, DJ does a really good job running his guy off when we get a touch. I thought that was huge for our psyche, if anything else, to say, man, we took it down and scored a touchdown. But uh, credit to Avery. I thought he was on point and played with a lot of confidence on Saturday. Chris, you guys haven't had the best record coming off a of bye over the last couple of years. Is there any thought to switching things up to try to change that? There's only so much you can switch up. Um, we could come and practice this weekend, but I really don't want to do that. I mean, that's that's the biggest thing is is the time off the guys uh, get on a on a Friday, a Saturday. Um, but you got to give them, you got to get them away uh, from uh, from the facility and get them away from coaches and. Um, you know, part of that is your injuries. Part of that is who you're playing. Um, I, I don't, I don't get caught up in that any more than than I don't get caught up in last week. Goes well, you guys haven't lost two games in a row in a while. That doesn't mean anything, in my opinion. You better play really well that week uh, coming off of a loss. Just like if you have a bye week, you you better play your best football, home or away. And so, I, I don't get caught up like a lot of people do in all that stuff. Just like, boy, that's a must win on win on Saturday, or this game's more important than that one. Just have never got caught up in that in all my years. Do you have any thoughts on playing another late night game on the road? It's going to be a long Sunday. Um, that's for sure. Um, we we knew, and I think we've talked about this before. 
we knew when we brought all the schools in from the west coast that this was going to be a part of of what you're going to see and I, I take it a couple ways um uh, one that that's a challenge especially because we go on the road the next week too but the second thing is you know we're, we're playing on on the best networks too and we're playing on the prime spot and um we're a game that i believe i don't know how it works out but i believe we were probably along with colorado the top pick that week maybe if not we were second but um it's fun when when networks are picking you because you're one of the better games and then you got to figure out what what time you go on but uh, i think it's a credit to how well colorado's playing and i think it's a credit to our big win over oklahoma state what's the status on uso at this point um it's not as significant as maybe was feared. Um, I, I think he'll be day to day or week to week. He won't do anything this week, um, and uh, it wasn't as bad as as maybe it had looked out there. Uh, and he, Mindy said he was was moving around pretty well today, um, but it's going to be one of those things where it's going to it's going to be a week or so before we really know. The snaps that Dylan Edwards has had is that was that a concerted effort to get him more involved, or has he kind of earned that through more development? A little bit of both. Um, just trying to get him in some spots with two tailbacks in the game. Um, you know, we, we've been beat up a little bit at tight end with Lofton down and, and Oakley. That's why you saw uh, Ty Bowman a little bit more as well, um, as well as wide receivers. We just those guys taking are taking a lot of snaps, and, and we thought it was a good way for us to get Ty on the field as well as get Dylan on the field more. So uh, something that we'll continue to look at. Every every game plan is probably a little bit different, but uh, we need to see him more. We need to see guys like Ty Bowman more. Through five weeks four tight ends have scored for you guys. Obviously, it's been a couple-year evolution to get the depth yep. the way that it is. How happy are you with, with that room right now? Really, really pleased. I think Coach LePac does a great job. There's a bunch of unselfish guys in there that uh, uh, want to help the football team in any way they can. Uh, they do a lot of the dirty work with uh, a lot of blocks that don't maybe go noticed as, as much as an offensive lineman, but uh, uh, they're doing it on both ends. They're running the ball really well, and then they're, they're handling their role. You know, we've um, Oak's been banged up a little bit, so we haven't played Garrett as much as as I think we will moving forward. Because I think he's this week we'll get him get Oakley 100 uh, percent and healthy, which is exciting because uh, I know how special a player he can be. But then guys like Will and Swanee um, have come up and stepped up, so. Uh, it's pleased to have the depth that that we have there at that position. Is there any particular thing that you're you're more proud of with DJ's performance in particular than than, than others? You know, um, just the fact that you know he he had a, a turnover the week before that is uncharacteristic of DJ, um, and he was excited to come out and compete again, and com- excited to get the football and and make some good plays, and um, the touchdown run he had. Um, was a was a great run blocked really well and we always say it's now you one-on-one with a player and he made him miss and, and out ran everybody um, I thought DJ played one of his best games you mentioned using this week to help develop younger guys how do you sort of approach that uh, throughout the week yeah we're pretty diligent on uh, on the amount of reps that guys have taken from a practice standpoint and a game standpoint and if a guy's you, know, you take a kid like Carver or Hadley or TP, they've taken so many practice and so many game reps. Their shelf life, we got to we have to be smart with those guys. Then you look at a guy like Cap or Beckwith, um, Pastore, some of those guys that are continuing to be in that too deep and getting better, but maybe don't take as many of the game reps. Those are the guys that we have to really push this week. The guys that are on the travel squad that are close to playing, but for whatever reason, um, Austin Moore's playing way more snaps than Rex Van Wy. Okay, Rex is still a good player for us. We've got to find more opportunities for Rex. Uh, and then you look at it a step further, and all those guys that maybe are working on scout team that are true freshmen uh, or redshirt freshmen that uh, uh, they get a chance to play K-State versus K-State and not be on scout team. You mentioned the true freshman and Zayshon Rich has – carved out a role on special teams yeah. and you know is nearing that point of, of losing the the red shirt year uh, what have you seen from him to, to earn that role and what's the next step for his development him getting on the field on defense and he's getting closer um and he's a guy that uh, when you're in game planning mode he t- 
Jacob Parrish and Keenan Garber are really good players. Justice James has played a lot of football for us as well, so he fits into that mode after that with McIntosh, with Dunbar. Zayshon's a guy that needs all these reps so that we feel confident, and he feels confident in what we're doing defensively that we can give him 15, 20 snaps so that Jacob and Keenan aren't playing 70 snaps. Um, it's harder to do that when you're in the middle of game planning, and this is an opportunity for us to take a step back. Yes, we are still game planning, but we can take a step back and try to get some of these younger guys uh, opportunities. And that's going you know, to go all the way back to Kellis's question. It's hard to change what you do. And so I really don't think it's a direct result of us winning the game or losing the game after a bye week. It's more of what what's our game plan, what's our mindset, and do we execute? We have to give older guys a little bit of a rest. It's just the nature of this sport. And you have to continue to develop guys. And as you guys know, now more than ever, you need to continue to develop guys. Because if you don't, they're not going to be here. You have to show those guys that you believe in them. You have to show those guys, hey, you're going to get them an opportunity um, to, to work K-State stuff and not to work scout stuff. And, and um, that's what we're going to do this week. What impresses you most about DJ? Um, the fact that um, you you rarely see uh, a change in personality. You rarely see uh, any frustration. Uh, you, you, you rarely see the excitement. But it's even keel. And you get a guy that comes to work every day. I don't care if it's in the weight room, if it's a um, run in the summer, or it's uh, on, on a practice on a Wednesday. He sets up those moves that he that he makes on Saturday, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday by um, talking to the scout kids and, and seeing those pictures. And he's a he's a professional at what he does, and he, he learned an awful lot from Deuce uh, about how to really attack uh, a game plan and how to attack a defense in, in a running style. And even though he's a different running style than Deuce, he learned a lot about how you set up defenders. And um, he doesn't just run the ball. There's a lot behind what he does. And he puts the time in the film room, which I love that he does. And, you know, it, whether you guys talk about him or I talk about him, he's fine with it. He, he doesn't care if anybody talks about him. Just let me do my job. Well, I'm curious. I think people are talking about him. But maybe should he be considered one of the better backs in – in the nation easy for me to say yes but i've been saying that for a while and i said it at, at big 12 media days i think he's one of the more underrated running backs in our league and you guys know we got phenomenal running backs in this league we just played one that's a really good player we're we're going to continue to play him and you know there's um i hope from the other side people are seeing the same thing and saying well, you, you've got a game plan a little bit for 31 um, because I know we game planned uh, for Oklahoma State's kid for sure, and I'm sure that people um, know that 31's at and, and the plays that he runs really well, and uh, um, he's he's a dominant factor, and he seems to prove it every week. You talked about the, the tight ends earlier, but I think they have six touchdowns now, and four different guys have caught touchdown passes. Are you doing anything different in the red zone to – to get it to them, or is it just the way? No, I, I think some of it is, you know, the one we had to will this this week was a really good setup um, that uh, our offense put together that uh, um, we did against, I think, Missouri last year with Senate. We did the same kind of action. We really didn't think Oakley was going to be open on the one that he caught, but they double-covered Dylan. And that's one of those factors of they knew where Dylan was and two guys went to him and they dropped coverage um, uh, on Oakley. And I think it was a really good job of, of Avery just going through his progression. And, and those kids catching the ball and doing things right in practice, being at the right depth, being at the right spot, um, converting when they have those opportunities of practice to gain confidence. And uh, a couple of years ago you kind of dropped the – the straight fullback yep. position. Does, did that change how you recruited the tight end yeah. position with those guys? Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're trying to find a little bit more length um, and, and guys that uh, um, 
could be a fullback. You know, Swanee could be a true fullback for us, but he's really good as an as a inline tight end. Um, and then we're we're finding those other guys like Lofton and, and Will and and Oaks kind of a mixture where they can flex out, be in the backfield. A lot of people, as you guys know, have those tight ends off the ball so that they either can swipe back or or arc and lead. Um, you're trying to find more of those type of guys that can be uh, effective in the run game and pass game. You also maybe look for guys with more, maybe in high school, more wide receiver skills that can grow into. That's the, the key, bodies. Arnie. They've got to be able to grow. You know, if if Ben Sennett was one of those kids that was 207 pounds when he came in here and left at about 245, um, but you have to want to grow and you have to want to work. And I think all the tight ends that we've had, I don't know if any of them have come in here at 240, uh, but they've built themselves up uh, through True and through Troush in the nutrition area. Coach, it felt like on Saturday there was a lot of young players that were getting their names mentioned mm -hmm. uh, with making plays you know, from Chidi and Ace and all that. But are there a couple of names that are standing out to you right now? Maybe they're not getting the most snaps, but they're making the best of their, of their time on the field. Um, Jack Fabris is playing phenomenal on special teams and carving out a role on defense. He's a good example. Colby McAllister is doing a really good job on special teams. Um, our special teams player of the week this week was Zach Wittenberg. Um, does, nobody knows much about Zach. He's been in our program for a few years. He's a glue guy that is a backup linebacker. Um, he calls all of our stuff on punt as our shield player um, and, and never misses a call as well as goes down and covers well. And then he had two tackles inside the 17-yard line on kickoff. And uh, that's a huge deal when that offense has got to go 80 five plus yards rather than giving up a, a 30, 40 yard return. So uh, guys like Zach, Zach Wittenberg help us win and it's fun to see him have success. And one more thing on the tight ends. You mentioned last week, Braden Lofton might be out a couple of weeks or a few weeks, I think yep. you said. So is that in hopes that he'll be back for the Colorado yeah, game? Yeah, that, that, that's the hope. Um, we probably won't know till uh, early to mid next week because he won't practice this week, but that's the hope. I was gonna ask about Jaden. Uh, were you, how were you? Yeah. Were you encouraged by what he did? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Jaden knows our offense really well, um, and uh, is a guy that uh, is gaining confidence and gaining chemistry with with Avery. Uh, I thought Avery threw a couple of really good balls, and he came up with a couple of really good catches. He's strong at the point of attack, uh, and. Uh, you know, it's fun to see him, and we saw that last year a little bit. Now we've got to stay consistent, and I think he's he's ready and is able to make that next step because uh, uh, people are going to start seeing where Jace is at and Keegan, uh, and it's fun to have that option that uh, uh, Avery's got a lot of confidence in. I thought Jaden played a really good game. I would ask about Avery a little bit more, too, about overcoming things that don't go perfectly. It seems yeah. like he's starting to maybe – I don't know if turn the corner is the right yeah. word or not, but he seems to be handling that quite a bit better. How do you see that and how he's yeah. moving forward? Yeah, and some of that stuff, Wyatt, is just the more snaps you get, the more pictures you see, the more blitzes you see, the more uh, rolled coverage you see, um, you just gain more confidence and um, – you just how he calls the play. I mean, there's there's confidence in the end, and he's very um, comfortable now. And I thought a couple times, a couple times he stepped up into the pocket and, and threw some really good balls. Um, and then obviously, you know, he made the one kid miss on the edge and and, and scored. But um, he's getting more and more comfortable by standing in the pocket and delivering some strikes, as well as you know. We didn't because of the defense that they were playing. We didn't have very many designed runs for him, um, and that was more a product of what Oklahoma State was doing to take it away. But then they were giving us more of the inside stuff with DJ, so we had to take advantage of that. And so if that's the case and people are going to take that away, DJ's got to be successful, Dylan's got to be successful running the ball, and then we've got to be able to throw it with good efficiency, and we were able to do that. I know you've uh, always done this during your junior time at Kansas State, but stood out to me last game. You had some impressive runs down the sideline to call timeouts, getting in front of the refs. Is this something that you did like day one when you were bumped up to head coach at North Dakota State, or where would you pick up on that? Probably being out of position as a coach and have to get down there 
and hustle down it and, and make a call. Um, I, I don't feel as good. I don't know if I, I became a year older last week, and I was probably more sore after this game, probably because of that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even think about it, Kellis. I just see, oh, shoot, that play clock spot running out. I better do something about this. Um, and uh, so I probably ran. I don't know. I, I don't remember what you're talking about, so that's probably a good thing, too. <laughs> you were about 35 yards. I'm wow. Running, so that was. You should put a catapult on. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can get 10 miles an hour. Coach, I know you can't go into specifics on recruiting, but with the basketball staff week after week bringing in you know, big time recruits. Obviously, it's a, a big time atmosphere out there. Just, I guess, how much do do you and Coach Tang kind of work around each other to, to build your programs? Um, I think it's important that all of our programs help each other out. And uh, I'm excited when Coach Tang's got visitors here and Mitty's got visitors here and uh, Gephardt's got a visitors here. I mean, Pete, all of I mean, we use each other so much. It's like when there's basketball games and we're going over there and, and taking our kids to basketball games or taking our kids to baseball games and volleyball matches. And um, I think that's a, a part of our student body. I mean, like I say, uh, go to any sporting event at K-State, you're going to have great student support and the band's going to be going. And it's, it's cool for um, the recruits to see that all of our student athletes are together in this, and that's that's fun to see. And so, whether or not we truly help each other out, absolutely. There's Jerome helps me out a ton with recruits, and uh, uh, we're trying to do the same as as much as we can. Looking ahead, Colorado obviously could throw the heck out of the ball. What kind of challenges do you think they're going to present to your defense? Haven't dug a lot into them because of some other meetings we had today, um, but uh, obviously watched them a, a couple of games. Um, Great players um, that um, I think Shadur Sanders is one of the best quarterbacks in the country without a, without a doubt. Um, and uh, um, they have a bunch of wideouts. Everybody talks about Hunter, and Hunter is a – he might be the top pick in the draft um, because I'm just shocked. I'm, I'm amazed – not shocked. I'm amazed that kid plays every snap of defense and every snap of offense. That, that's it, That's so impressive. Um, for what uh, he's able to do, and then they they have so many receivers that can beat you. So um, for us, we got to come up with a really good plan on defense, and, and we're just starting that now. But um, we got to come up with a great plan to have have a chance to try to at least control them a little bit. Coach, get, getting back to recruiting, and again, I know you can't talk specifics, but uh, you had to defend a high level recruit in Avery. Uh, all the way up to signing mm -hmm. day. You got the early commitment, yep. then you had to defend it. How difficult is that when so many programs don't take the commitment as it's done? Um, it's just part of what you do. I, I guess I, I I think of that as you're always recruiting them. And whether or not you have a commitment, whether or not you have a, a, a young man on your team, unfortunately with the way it is in college football right now, we don't want there to be tampering. There is tampering. We know there is through third parties and stuff. Um, that you're, you're re -re I talk about all the time. We re-recruit our roster every day. Um, not only the kids that, that we're still looking at that aren't even at K-State yet, but the kids that are at K-State, um, we're recruiting those guys every day. Um, and that's just – that's a part of college football now. The last week you played – a Big 12 after dark game. You had the turnaround where you get back late in the morning or early in the morning. Uh, both you and BYU play the 11 a.m. slots this week mm -hmm. after a late game. Next week you play another late game with a road game. Would you like to see the Big 12 try to accommodate with a non-early kick in that game? You would like to. I don't think we have any control over that, but that's something I think as, as coaches we need to at least express. Um, and see, it's it's still all about the well-being of the student athlete, and can they bounce back like that? And, and it's harder when you know we're going to have Colorado. I don't know how long of a flight it is, but Morgantown's our longest flight of, of the year the next week, and that that's that's obviously a challenge. You control what you can control, and I don't control any of that stuff. So we've got to just uh, in, enjoy this off week and get some work done, and then get ready to go back to work. Um, last week I was accused of not asking the hard questions, so I'm going to bring the thunder. You ready? Oh, uh, you look really good in lavender. 
Why wouldn't your team look good in lavender? Okay, Al Serby put this put this in my locker, and uh, I think you need to go and ask the AD questions. <laughs> you need to be you need to have your own spot with Ask the AD. So, but thank you for telling me I look good in this. <laughs> I don't know how you follow that, but uh, wide receivers, you mentioned Avery's confidence. You've seen that as high as it's been. For them to have their best game of the season so far, what, what does that do for their confidence? Uh, against really good defense. That, that was the other thing. Oklahoma State's a really good defense. They're going to win a lot of games. Um, but uh, I thought we had a good week of preparation. You don't just have a good Saturday. I thought we had a really good preparation uh, week of prep. And I, once again, I thought Avery was really on point. So if he's on point during the week, we're catching a lot of those balls. And then uh, it turned into a confidence and in, in guys playing really fast on Saturday.